We call it fret and faith. We turn our Bible to the book of Psalm 37. The book of Psalm 37. Please shall we all turn to our Bible, Psalm 37. It's a very, very important portion of the scriptures that we need to consider in times like this. We start from verse number one. It says, fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass, and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good, so that thou dwell in the land, that verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thy heart. Verse 5, commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as light, and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way. Because of the man who bringeth wickedness devices to pass. Cease from anger. And for sake not, fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. For evil doers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be. Yea, thou shalt diligently consider his place, 
and it shall not be. But the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. May the Lord bless the readings of his words into our innermost beings in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning, I have a big, big burden, very big burden that has been disturbing me. I'm not be able to sleep because of what is happening around us. But I want to talk briefly about fret or faith. Fret or faith. Fret, that is F-R-E-T. We all know the spelling of uh, faith. Now, what is the meaning of fret? Fret means to worry unnecessarily and excessively. To worry unnecessarily and uh, excessively. In other words, to be fearful. God has a plan and a purpose, a program, a pursuit of abundant and successful life for his obedient, submissive children. The moment you give your life to Christ and you surrender your life to Christ, your destiny, your future, what you are, is in the hands of the Almighty God. And this is very, very important. Now, Today, the world is seeking for peace. The world is speaking, is seeking for happiness. The world is ignorantly rejecting the prince of peace. The I am that I am. The king of kings. The source of happiness. The lord of lords. The ancient of day. The author of all authority. The apex of heavenly and earthly administration. The God who is Alpha and Omega. Who is the chief priest. Who is the prophet? Who is all in all? The world had rejected him. And we see what is happening globally today. Why? Do you know uh, other United Nations or some other big worldwide organization? When they want to hold their meeting, you know how they don't call upon God? They just enter and start doing meeting. Which means the almighty God who created the heaven and the earth has not been recognized. And that what God intend us as human beings, irrespective of your background, to be able to acknowledge God all the time. Today, there is fear. Today, there is despair. Today, there is death all over. The other day, when I saw what is happening in Italy, and hundreds of coffins were lined up, I said, God, these people have died. Where will they spend eternity? That what came to my mind. Where will these people go? Will God say because of coronavirus, enter to heaven? Never. Because it has its own condition and requirements of what to do and what you are supposed to do to enter into heaven. Of course, if you are listening to me today and you don't believe in hell or heaven, then you are joking. Whether you believe or not, that does not change the mind of God and what he has proposed even before you were born. He calleth things that be not as if they were. Is God. And for this reason, we discover lives are just being lost. But where would they go? Where would they spend eternity? And eternity means endless life. And uh, Jesus gave one parable. He said there's a rich man. And a poor man. One is Lazarus. He didn't mention the name of the rich man. He said, look, this rich man gave fear God. I mean, did not fear God. Even he was always mocking the poor, the poor Lazarus. The Bible says say both of them died. And when both of them died, the rich man, he said, in hell, requested Lazarus that was now staying at the bosom of Abraham in heaven, that please send Abraham just to put his finger and put it on my thumb so that I can taste water. He said, no, it's not possible. There's a gulf. There's a gulf. Now, it's Jesus that gave this story. So, you, if you don't like, believe it or believe it or not. That is why today what is so important is salvation. You need to be born again. Corona or no corona. Let me tell you something. Apart from Corona, we still have something today that is uh, scientists have just discovered. They call it 
hunter virus. They say it's more deadly than corona. So where are we going? Where are we going to hide? That is the only way to hide is in Christ Jesus. Because he is the first and the last. He has all the power. He has all the strength. He has all the wisdom. He are, is the director of the heaven and the earth. He created the earth. The Bible said through him and for him, the earth, the world have been created. So if we neglect this prince of peace, how again? That's why the Bible says, if we neglect so great a salvation, how then? How? It's a question. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters that are listening to me, this time is for us to have a sober reflection of why are all these things? These are human beings dying like goats, dying like chicken. There was a time that said we have chicken flu and people, who, uh, chicken were dying, dying, dying. Okay? But then, now, human beings are dying. Both white doctors, even that are taking care of the sick, are dying. Where will they go? That is what is important now to ask ourselves. Okay? Many of these presidents of the country are coming out crying and weeping. Italy president was crying and crying. Said, look, at this time, we have reached our peak. Okay? But God, <laughs> but God, when man has reached his extremity, then God step in. And that's why you and I, we need the almighty God. We need the king of kings. We need the prince of peace. We need the I am that I am. We need the God who is the ancient of this. When you commit your life to the king of glory, brother, you have no fear. You have no fear. Now, today, I want us to listen, please. Today, most of the best-selling books are concerned on how to be rich, wealthy, successful, live long, and eating lifestyle. What to eat so that you can do that. This. Now, if I eat all these, those things and I'm very healthy and very distant, I feel like a man just come to my house. Just of recent. Or about a month or two months ago in Kaduna. Somebody was in his house. 30 full and new people just came to his, court, his house. His beautiful house. Broke in and carried him. Now, he has eaten good food. He has done everything. But he did not offend them. They didn't know him from Adam. But somebody say he's rich, he has money, okay? Then they kidnap him. So what are we talking? So that is why today, no matter what we say, how to do this, how to do this, is within the perimeter, okay, and the circumference of the earth. But the time we are going to spend in eternity is more than now. It's more than what we are going to spend on the earth. So we should use the coronavirus uh, pandemic to think very deeply about yourself. If I drop dead today, not through coronavirus, through any other sickness, or whatever, or accident, or full and or whatever, where will I spend eternity? That is the question. It's not a question, hey, I, want to be, I don't want the corona to reach me. It's not going to reach you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. However, whether you live 969 years like Methuselah, you see that. Where will you spend eternity? Will you be at Abraham Boson? That is the question we should be asking at this moment. This is what is agitating my mind right now. Sometimes, uh, being a pastor of uh, years, for many years, when I lose a member, the question, the first question I used to ask myself, I hope this person has gone to heaven. I hope when we, we get over there, God will not hold me responsible. Because that is the most important. Okay? That is the most important. Today, Including myself, I've written books or, or deliverance or um, uh, prosperity or this or that or that or this. Because if you, if you talk about write a book today or salvation, nobody will buy it. Nobody. You can you not see buy. Why? Because nobody's concerned. We are only concerned about the present now, which is dangerous. And therefore, my brothers and uh, my viewers, I want us to think very deeply. Where will you spend eternity? Naked I come and naked I go. Now, all these people that I was seeing went over the, uh, is it the uh, uh, television and all this, they just lie down there. In fact, there's a video that was sent to me where they were dropping money. That money is no longer useful to them. They're not after money. They are after their life. 
That is for now. But what of eternity? That's why the Bible says, What shall I profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? You have only soul. Life does not have duplicate. You can't, there's no copy. No copier on earth can duplicate. Of course, there's this issue of stem, stem cell and all these kind of people say uh, clone and all those things. But scientists have not been able to come out that we can produce human beings. Okay? We have not been able to see and say this is the person that we have duplicated and this. And if this is happening, then we have to work for our salvation with fear and trembling so that we will be conscious of hereafter. And I believe that if we do that, God will help us. Apart from coronavirus, young men today are doing what? Committing suicide. Your young people are committing suicide. Apart from numerous other sicknesses, ICC, okay? Terrorist group all over the world. They are busy, even as we are talking about coronavirus, they are busy killing. Of course, recently, about two weeks ago, or two or three weeks ago, in the northeast of Nigeria, we are talking about uh, soldiers who are being, you know, massacred by Boko Haram. Okay? And these people, these are the people that we are depending, they are supposed to protect us. They could not even protect themselves. So, if you are putting your mind, your faith, or your thought, and your will, and your mind, or human being for protection and security, you are wasting your time. Only God, the everlasting rock of ages, the ancient of days, the true and living God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, can give you real and true security, protection, divine guidance, divine leadership, righteousness, and long life. Because he knows everything. He knows. The day before you are conceived, God knows. That's why we call him omniscient God. Okay? And for that reason, brothers and sisters, we need to wake up and stand for God. God is the only one who can protect us because he's our father when you give your life to Christ. While my children were growing up, I used to carry them. I would throw them up. Up! And then I would catch them again. Carry them up. They would be laughing. So one day, I called them. I said, are you not afraid that uh, you will fall? He said, afraid of what? Are you not our father? Will you allow us to fall? Huh? I said, no. What if I made me say, say, Daddy, you can't make that kind of mistake. We are your children. That is the thing with God. The moment you surrender your life to the King of Kings, to the Lord of Lords, the Ancient of Days, the God who is the all-powerful God, the, your security is sure. Corona or no Corona, your life is not a function of Corona. Your life is hid in Christ Jesus who created the heaven and the earth before all things that's why when they were asking questions he said before Abraham I am so that is the only solution and I tell you brothers and sisters the more we neglect God the farther away we run away from God the farther away peace will come to us healing will come to us because he is the great physician he is the all in all. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you. Let me just give you some example in the Bible. Nehemiah was being pursued by so, Tobiah uh, and Sambalat. To kill. Because of God's work. Did God allow it? No. With all the weapons, with all the strategies, nothing, he completed his assignment. And by the grace of God, those of you who are children of God, you are going to complete your assignment here on earth successfully. No corona, nothing will touch you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That's the purpose of salvation. Okay? You have assurance and blessing here on earth and in heaven above is waiting for you. Jesus said, I've gone to prepare a place for you. For who? For believers. For those who have given their lives to Jesus Christ. Okay? They evaded everywhere. But the Himaya succeeded. What of Cedric, Mexico, and Abedigo? He was put into, they were put into the very furnace directly. Directly. But did God allow them to burn? It is the enemies that put that no died. Okay? What of the disciples? Peter put in prison. Put in prison. Okay? And lock and lock and lock. The angel came and woke him up. And he passed through the wall, passed through the gate. No time. 
Nobody, ah, they say the door is closed. This and this. This is what we call divine protection for the believers. For obedient children of God. So, you have nothing to fear if you're a child of God. Okay? If you either choose, that's why Jesus Christ said, choose this day, okay, whom you will serve. Whether it's the God or the Amorites, the idols and all those. But when you choose Jesus, there's just assurance and confidence and faith that with God all things are possible. And there will be assurance that your God is going to help us. Today, what are the signs of fretting and fear? Unprovoked and unnecessary anxiety, anger, damaged emotion and depression and frustration and all kinds of negative talks. When people are afraid, they say, hey, here, they say, so, 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 die, and all those things. And I've told people, don't go and be listening to uh, this one, die, uh, this, uh, so -to, this, this, and this, all sorts of things. This is what they say, they say, they say, they say. There are some information that are not useful. They only discourage you and water down your faith in God. Okay? As a child of God. But today, what are we happening? Fret or fear create what we call rigidity and self-pity. You'll not be able to sleep. Hey, if I die now, if I die the Bible, I mean, some people say the coward die before their time. You are not going to die before your time in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That is God. The Bible says, fret only these with, see, let me listen to me. There's a statement I want to make. And you might not write it down or quote it. Fret only these with the problem, not the solution. Fear only these with the problem, not the solution. Fretting can not open the locked door at all. It's only faith. That's why Jesus said, the just shall live by faith and faith in God. Why? Faith destroys fear. Faith. There are all kinds of faith. There are what we call sensual faith. Faith that comes from intellectual reasoning, your common sense, your deeds, I don't know what I'm talking about. But faith is spiritual. Faith is, spirit, is born out of the Holy Spirit. When a man has received Jesus Christ and the Spirit of God dwells in him, he is in position to believe God supernaturally. To be, I say, whatever may be, I know my God live it, my Redeemer live it. You'll be able to say it with boldness. I say, yes, God is the God. As one of my pastors used to say, God is the God. Now, faith turns hopelessness to hope. Turn loser to become gainers. Turn mistakes to miracles. Doubt the doubt. Faith acknowledges God that is all in all. That is it. Faith surrender everything completely to God. That is why the Bible says, without faith it is impossible to please the Lord. You can't. And you cannot have this kind of faith I'm talking about without you giving, surrendering your life to God and living in righteousness and obedience. It's not possible. Because it's not by power it's not by might. It's by the Spirit of God. It's by the mercy of God. If you read the book, of, I'm a student of the book of Romans. Because it talks about condemnation, it talks about righteousness, it talks about justification, it talks about sanctification, it talks about so many things. And being an intellectual, and I strongly believe being an a theologian, I love those kind of analysis of Paul. Okay? So, encompassingly, what are we? We are saved by grace. By who is bringing that grace? God's grace. God's mercy, God's direction, God's love, God's assurance that I am a child of God. <laughs> Even as I'm preaching now, I'm so confident that if I drop dead today by his grace, I'm going to make heaven. Yeah. I've seen some of my members die. I've seen so many people. I've gone to mortuary. I've looked at people. I've called some people's name. Uh, so, 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 please. They can't answer me. So, that thought used to come to me now. One day when I put in the mortuary, and my children and my pastor will rally me and say, Dr. Modernity, whoa, wake up. I will not even hear. If you put all the vehicles and all the money and everything behind me, I won't even know. No more consciousness. That is why those of you who are listening and looking, you need to surrender. Because this man in the Bible, Job, with all the God that blessed him, he said, naked I come and naked I go. Okay? There's one man, isn't I say Alexander the Great. He did something. Before he died, he left something. He said, when I die, I want an open coffin. Okay? And I want my hand to be put outside so that everybody will see my hand like this. Huh? They asked him why. He said, to show that I am being buried 
And I'm going out with nothing. I'm not going to be buried with nothing. Nothing. And that's confirmed what Job said. Naked I came and naked I go. In fact, in my life, as a young man, very, very young, the first track I've ever written in my life, that is the topic. Naked I came and naked I go. And people were laughing at me. In fact, my printer, anytime I was going there, he would say, ah, naked I came and naked I go is coming. The man who printed it for me. But brothers and sisters, the Bible says I've been young and, and now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaking nor seed begging for bread. God has been faithful. God has been protected. I've passed through an accident and sicknesses and all those things. And God has been protected. The same God will protect you. Corona will not kill you, sir. Not this thing that we are talking But the most important thing, have a solid, fundamental, dynamic faith in God. Have the assurance that if you drop dead today, heaven is your home and that angels are going to welcome you. Finally, I want to share something with you that happened to my father. He was not an educated man. But I wasn't there when he died. But the neighbors told me. And my mother was there. He said, they bathed him. He had not died that time. But they felt they should bath him, put him something. And then my mother prepared pap. The Yoruba call it Akamu. And now try to feed him. He said an invisible hand threw the thing away. He tried, she tried the second time. An invisible hand threw the thing away. The third time, an invisible hand told the this thing. And they heard a voice. We have come to take him home. And they saw a bright light. Not in the, not in the, in night, a bright light. And the man just gave up. That's the kind of death I want to die. Not Corona. Corona will not kill you in Jesus' name. I said, it will kill you. But dead, if you not kill you, you must live right. If you are born again, child of God. Because life, as I mentioned, has no duplicate at all. Don't play with your life. Don't say, well, what of so, so, so person? They that compare themselves with themselves are not wise. And let me tell you something. The last thing I want to tell you is in Psalm 23, verse 4. He said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Okay? He said, Thou art with me. Therefore, my brother, <laughs> This is the time that you be with God and God be with you. Let us pray. I want us to pray now. If you are looking at me here or watching or anywhere, and you have not given your life to Jesus, you are not, you are not sure that you'll be born again or you are born again or any time that God calls you home, okay? By the grace of God, angels will welcome you. I want you to pray this simple prayer. It's very simple. It's not an academic prayer. So people will say, I've prayed it with thousands and thousands of people and God has transformed. It's the spirit behind it and your faith behind it. Pray this prayer, man. Say, Lord Jesus, I confess my sin. I'm a chronic wicked sinner. But today, I forsake sin. Forsake the world and his pleasure. And I repent. I turn away from all my wickedness. And I surrender my life to you. To be my savior, my lord, as from today. Let your Holy Spirit come and take control of my spirit, my soul, my body forever. As from today, I am yours. And thou art dying. You are dying. I belong to you. And you belong to me, Lord. I will follow you all the day. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. And for those of you, perhaps you have given your life or you have prayed this prayer before, but then you are not even too sure because of the pressure of life, because of problems and uh, friends and influences here and there. And during this period, you want to rededicate or consecrate your life to God. Please, I want you to pray this way, another prayer for me, with me. Say, Lord Jesus, 
whatever happened, by your grace, by your mercy, I will make heaven my eternal home. So help me, Lord. I promise to follow you all the way during Hamata, during snow, no matter how the weather or the journey of life is tough and rough. I have made up my mind that I will follow you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name.